Lifeline Plus to cure fleas and ticks. Don't trust anything else. Welcome back. Politicians say they never pay attention to poll results, arguing that politics is not a popularity contest. And when it comes to television's biggest stars, the poll that matters is called a Q-score. It measures a personality's appeal and their turn-off factor, which can be a career killer in this business. James Thomas has the results of the secret hit list that shows who's on the up and who's on the nose. It had to be you. It had to be you. For many Aussie stars, strutting the Logie red carpet is a career highlight. A public roll call of our favourite personalities. For the TV executives that employ our celebrities, it's a roll call of a different kind which makes its way down the carpeted corridors of power. A list which can make or break a celebrity's brand. People that are on this list are currency, and this is currency. Media commentator and CEO of Fusion Strategies, Steve Allen, is referring to Q-Scores, an annual compilation of the hottest property in the Australian entertainment landscape. They're a qualitative measure of programs and personalities. So you can get a, a program score and you can get people who star in that program or other personalities like newsreaders and other stars on air. Members of the public are surveyed to give their verdict on their favourite 100 personalities. Topping the list, Hamish Blake. <laughs> the great thing about Hamish Blake is the girls love him and the guys love him. Dissecting the rankings, TV writer Peter Timms says Jen Hawkins, Michael Caton and Magda Zhubansky are universally loved, which might explain their ranking in the top ten. A lucrative place to be. Oh, a Magnus Q score would totally help in a marketability. That's the whole reason. If you want to sell Pepsi or McDonald's or whatever it may be, if Hamish Blake gets out there and tries to sell it, or Magda or Rebecca Gibney, people are going to trust them more than the people further down on the list. Others who scored an A plus in the Q: Ernie Dingo, Tony Collette, Andrew Denton, and John Clark. And some of the bigger names at the very end of the Q: Jamie Jury, Sarah Murdoch, and Bert Newton. Bert's coming in at 77. I mean, Bert's great. He's already an established star, but his star is fading. But in an industry renowned for ego, it must prick, say, the green thumb of Don Burke just a little to find he has slipped to number 83. Similar story for Daryl Summers. He came in at number 95. Daryl Summers, 95. I'm surprised he's even in the top 100. I mean, will the guy ever go away? That's the problem with being at the top. You'll eventually fall. Unless lots of people dislike you intensely, then you're a chance of the bad boy vote. You need the bad guy. It's not all about the good guys. Obviously, I'm, you know... Of the people surveyed on Carl Sanderlands, a whopping 80% responded with negative comments about him. But still, he gets paid a fortune by networks because he's considered valuable. So it begs the question, are Q scores a massive waste of time and money? I understand why we need the Q scores. The executives like it, the advertisers like it. It puts rankings on people and how they're going to use them in their advertising campaigns or on television. But it's kind of hard to understand. It's kind of like television ratings. Everyone can make something out of, some, out of nothing. But here's what I don't understand about Q scores. Number two was Rebecca Gibney. And yet, when you look at the figures broken down, she scored higher in percentage of people that recognised her, higher in the percentage of people that had a positive response to her, and she had less negative responses than Hamish. So why did she come in at number two? We'd argue that she's actually number one. She's got less negatives. She's got a higher recognition. So regardless of the Q-score ranking column, we'd actually say that we'd rank her above Hamish. The man that compiles the scores, David Castron, declined our interview request. Fusion Media's Steve Allen does subscribe to the service, as do many networks, but he cautions Q-scores are far from the perfect popularity barometer. Don't live and die by Q-scores. They're a very, very valuable tool, um, and their trending from survey to survey is an important thing to look for, but they're not the be-all and end-all. And stay with us still to come, some people who would never win a popularity contest. Still ahead.